Hi everyone, let's practice some MCQs on glycolysis. This is the second part of the MCQs. In the first part, I have already explained the 10 MCQs on glycolysis. Question, question number one. In Amtanmir Hawk pathway, 2 phosphoglycerate is converted to. They are asking about the glycolytic pathway. It is the second last reaction in which the 2-phosphoglycerate is converted into A. Phosphonyl pyruvate B. Phenol pyruvate C. Dihydroxystyrene phosphate D. 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. So the right option is A. Phosphoenol pyruvate. As you can see here, this is the 10-step prediction of glycolysis in which they have asked about the second last reaction in which 2-phosphoglycerate is converted into phosphoenol pyruvate with the help of the enzyme enolase. Enolase is the enzyme which converts the 2-phosphoglycerate to phosphoenol pyruvate. Question number 2. Following is an enzyme required for glycolysis. A. Pyruvate kinase. B. Pyruvate carboxylase. C. Glucose 6-phosphatase. D. Glycerol kinase. So the right option is A, pyruvate kinase. Among these options, only the pyruvate kinase is the enzyme which is required for glycolysis. Other three enzymes mentioned are the enzymes of gluconeogenesis, which does not belong to the glycolytic pathway. As you see here, this is the glycolytic pathway 10-step reaction in which the 10 enzymes are mentioned. So in this pathway, in these options, only the last enzyme pyruvate kinase is mentioned which catalyzes the reaction of phosphoenol pyruvate to pyruvate so this enzyme is mentioned in the in the options so this enzyme catalyzes the glycolytic reaction but all these other three enzymes mentioned in the options belongs to the gluconeogenesis pathway so this as you can see phosphoenol pyruvate in from the both pathway as the split pathway continues to two pathways so 2-phosphoenol pyruvate converts into 2-pyruvate and this is the energy generation phase in which there is the production of two ATP molecules, one from one pathway and the other from other pathway. So together, this reaction gives rise to the production of two ATP molecules. Question number three is two examples of substrate level phosphorylation in EM pathway means abdomen mirror pathway the second name of the glycolysis of glucose metabolism are in the reactions of A, 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate and phosphoenol pyruvate, B, glucose 6-phosphate and fructose 6-phosphate, C, 3-glycerol-dehydrate-phosphate and phosphoenol pyruvate, D, 1,3-diphosphoglycerate and 2-phosphoglycerate. So the right option is they have asked about what are the two substrates at which the substrate level phosphorylation takes place. They are asking about the direct ATP synthesis, which are the two steps in glycolytic pathway in which there is the substrate level phosphorylation or we can say that which are the two reactions and steps in which there is the direct ATP synthesis. The right option is A, 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate, one ATP is produced by this reaction and the other is phosphoenol pyruvate and the one ATP is reduced by this reaction. If we see it in this glycolytic pathway, this is the 10 step reaction of the glycolysis in which the energy payoff, in which the energy generating phase, one is this 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate is converted into 3-phosphoglycerate. In this reaction, as the phosphate is attached to the one position and third position, one position phosphate gets attached to ADP and it converts into ATP. Similarly, after the splitting phase, two pathways proceed, so that's why. 1 and 1, 2. So 1, 3 bisphosphoglycerate is converted into 3 phosphoglycerate. This is known as substrate level phosphorylation or we say that direct ATP synthesis. The other ATP direct ATP synthesis in this whole reaction also takes place at energy generating phase, which is the last reaction in which phosphoenol pyruvate is converted into pyruvate. In this reaction, the phosphate from this phosphoenol pyruvate is at attached to ADP and it gives rise to ATP. So 1 ATP and 1 ATP. So 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 ATP are produced at the substrate level phosphorylation.
Question number four. During glycolysis, fructose 1, 6 diphosphate is decomposed by the enzyme A. Enolase A, B. Fructokinase C. Aldolase D. Diphosphofructofosphatose. The right option is aldolase. As the aldolase is the enzyme that catalyzes the conversion of fructose 1, 6 diphosphate into dihydroxytone phosphate and glycerol 3-phosphate. So they have asked about the reaction which is the splitting which is also known as the splitting reaction or the splitting phase in the glycolysis in which the fructose 1 6 base phosphate with the help of the enzyme aldolase it divides the converts the fructose 1 6 base phosphate into ketoses and aldoses into dihydroxystone phosphate 3 phosphate and glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate has the aldehyde group while dihydroxystone phosphate 3 phosphate has the ketone group as the glycolysis pathway, you can see here it is a 10 step reaction in which it has the investment phase. This one is the splitting phase, and then there is the payoff phase. So, they have specifically asked about this reaction fructose 1 6 bisphosphate. This in reaction is catalyzed with the help of the enzyme known as aldolase, which split the fructose 1 phosphate into dihydroxystone phosphate, which is keto group, and glyceraldehyde phosphate, which has the aldehyde group. Question number five, conversion of glucose to glucose 6-phosphate in human liver is by A, hexokinase only, B, glucokinase only, C, hexokinase and glucokinase, D, glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase. So the right option for this question, they have asked about the enzyme which will convert the glucose into glucose 6-phosphate. As glucose, as soon it enters inside the cell by the glucose, by the glut transporters, it is soon trapped by the phosphorylation. The glucose gets phosphorylated at 6 position with the help of the ATP. ATP is converted into ADP and glucose becomes glucose 6 phosphate. So this reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme glucokinase and hexokinase. From both of them, one may act glucokinase and hexokinase. So what are the molecules on which the glucokinase will act and what are the molecules on which the glucokinase act? As the name indicates that glucokinase, it will act on the specifically on glucose while hexokinase it acts on all the hexoses there are some other differences that are also important that may also come in the mcqs any factors there are different factors so you may consider the seven mcqs from these factors first of all um, the glucokinase and hexokinase what are the substrates as the glucohexokinase acts on all hexoses while the glucokinase is only specific for the glucose where they are present distribution hexokinase on all tissues while glucokinase is only present on liver cells it only acts in liver correct inhibition how they are regulated hexokinase are regulated or inhibited by glucose 6 phosphate while glucose glucokinase is not affected by the glucose 6 phosphate levels km value high affinity the hexokinase has low km value so that's why it has the high affinity it means that hexokinase High affinity means that even if there are very low concentration of glucose, if there are very low concentration of glucose inside the blood, hexokinase can also act on them. So that's why it is known as high affinity means it can also detect the low concentration of glucose and can act on them. While the glucokinase has the high Km value, it means that it has low affinity. It means that glucokinase will require the high concentration of glucose to act on them. Glucokinase mostly act on after the meal after the meal as the glucose concentration is high so the glucokinase are specifically act on them effect of insulin as hexokinase are not affected by the insulin while glucokinase are activated by the insulin effect of carbohydrate not affected while glucokinase are activated by the carbohydrate as i said after the meal the glucokinase act on them and their levels are high effect of starvation hexokinase are not affected while the starvation inhibits the glucokinase because in starvation the glucose level will be, will be low so the glucokinase it acts in the high level of glucose so it will not the star in starvation the glucokinase will be inhibited question number six fluoride inhibits which enzyme and arrests glycolysis let's see here option a glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate dehydrogenase b acanthase c enolase 
D. Succinate dehydrogenase. So the right option is C. Enolase. Enolase is the enzyme which catalyzes the second last reaction of the glycolysis pathway. If the fluoride, the fluoride inhibits the enolase and it inhibits the glycolytic pathway. This is the reaction which is catalyzed by the enolase. 2 phosphoglycerate is converted into phosphoenol pyruvate with the help of the enzyme enolase. So this enolase enzyme it also requires the presence of magnesium ion. The cofactor this requ this reaction requires the cofactor in the presence of with, which is the magnesium ion act as a cofactor to proceed this reaction. So this magnesium ion is inhibited by fluoride. Fluoride inhibits this cofactor activity, which inhibits this process and pathway, which ultimately inhibits the glycolytic pathway. The high energy compound phosphoenol pyruvate is generated from 2 phosphoglycerate by the enzyme enolase. This enzyme requires magnesium ion or manganese ion and is inhibited by fluoride. So the fluoride it will inhibit the magnesium ion which is a cofactor in this reaction for enolase activity. So the glycolytic pathway may be inhibited. Question number seven. The total glucose in the body is how many grams of glucose are present in the body? A. 10 to 15. B. 20 to 30. C. 40 to 50. D. 60 to 80. The right option is B. 20 to 30 grams of glucose are present in the, inside the human body. As you can see here, the distribution, they have shown the distribution of the glucose as the glucose source is the food. We take the carbohydrate, complex carbohydrate from the food sources. It goes to our digestive system. And finally, in small intestine, they converts into monosaccharide units. From the small intestine, monosaccharides, they are absorbed inside the blood capillaries. And from the blood, they are taken to the organs and tissues of the body. How they are distributed? Almost 33% they are utilized in the muscles. 34% they goes to the liver. If there is access, they will be stored and whenever utilized, whenever there is required, then they are again released into the blood. 33% is utilized or go to the brain and RBCs. Very important and the most common question asked, what is the normal fasting blood glucose level? that there is two type of values fasting and random so there is um, the most accurate to determine and find out the blood glucose level is to find the fasting blood glucose level a below 10 milligram per deciliter b below 100 milligram per deciliter c below 100 to 125 milligram per deciliter d above 140 milligram per deciliter so the right option is below 100 milligram per deciliter but it must not be below 60 mg per deciliter because below 60 it will be hypoglycemia. So it is between 80 to 100 are considered the normal fasting blood glucose levels. Question number 9. Pyruvate kinase requires which ion for maximum activity? A. Sodium, B. Potassium, C. Calcium, D. Magnesium. The right option is potassium. As the pyruvate kinase is required in the glycolytic pathway in the last step in which phosphoenol pyruvate is converted into pyruvate with the help of the enzyme pyruvate kinase. Pyruvate kinase, this enzyme requires the potassium ion for their activity. As you can see in this diagram, the potassium ion the site for the binding of potassium ion to the pyruvate kinase. So this phosphoenol pyruvate as the two phosphoenol pyruvate because after the splitting pathway, though two pathways proceed, two phosphoenol pyruvate give rise to two molecules of pyruvate with the help of the enzyme pyruvate kinase. And this step, there is the synthesis of two ATP molecules from each pathway, one and the other. So one ATP and one ATP, so it gives rise to two production of two ATP. Question number 10, the last MCQs, which of the following would be expected in pyruvate kinase deficiency? A. Increased level of lactate in RBCs. B. Multic anemia. C. Decreased ratio of ADP to ATP. 
D. Increased phosphorylation of glucose to glucose 6-phosphate. The right option is like the pyruvate kinase deficiency. What will happen to the RBCs if the glycolytic pathway is affected? It will cause the, it will lead to the hemolytic anemia. As in glycolysis is the 10-step reaction in which the last reaction is phosphoenol pyruvate is converted into pyruvate with the help of the enzyme pyruvate kinase. In this reaction, there is also the synthesis of ATP. To cause the oxidation reduction reactions, glucose, when the glucose is completely oxidized, it is converted into pyruvate. When the pyruvate kinase is inhibited or it is not present, then the glucose oxidation will be affected. As a result, it will increase the reduction inside the red blood cells. So due to increased reduction, it will cause the hemolysis and the lysis of red blood cells. And if the hemolysis and the red blood cells occurs, it will cause the decrease in the number of red blood cells which will lead to the development of the hemolytic anemia in which there is a deficiency or decrease of red blood cells due to the hemolysis of red blood cells. So the hemolysis may also occur due to the deficiency of the pyruvate kinase enzyme. Thank you for watching. That's all for today. Don't forget to watch the part 1 and part 2 of glycolysis. I'm also uploading the MCQs, practice MCQs on Krebs cycle and glycogen metabolism. Thank you for watching and keep watching.